process. And then Tundra, when it thaws, is releasing these uh, ancient methane gases, which are going to uh, double or um, add to um, the anthropogenic gas emissions. Um, so I just, I just want to introduce that issue. I don't have time to, to, to give um, a long discussion of, of the implications of global climate change. Yeah. What's the definition of anthropogenic? Anthropogenic uh, is human, human generated, human caused, as opposed to natural, which would be um, like the albedo, albedo effect, which is um, a darker surface is just going to reflect. No, actually, that albedo is the reflecting off the white surface. The white surface, yeah. not the black surface. Yeah. Oh, okay, so the T-shirt analogy. Oh, is bad. So it's the lack of albedo that's bad. Yeah. Right, 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 because it won't reflect back. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, see, I'm here to learn. And then the third issue is uh, dwindling natural. Um, fresh water supply for 7 billion people. I don't know how many of you caught it, but in March, the U.S. intelligence, uh, uh, there was a U.S. intelligence report that was classified, um, but um, uh, it was, it, that was declassified. I thought that just the summary was released. Um, that's okay. Um, that by 2030, there's going to be uh, dire political unrest in northern Africa, southern Asia, and the Middle East as a result of uh, Lack of access to uh, to water supplies. Seventy uh, percent of that water our water supply goes to agricultural uses. So just to draw the dots a little bit more, um, traditional agriculture uses less water, um, or it doesn't have to concentrate into one area. And uh, so traditional uh, 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 industrial large scale agriculture, which is heavily reliant on uh, irrigation and uh, corporate use of water, such as to fill Coke bottles, etc., um, is a, a terrible strain on a more and more precious uh, resource uh, that, that we're going to deal with. Dams and river channelizations that maneuver water to, to cities um, and away from uh, local populations that would need to use them uh, for local farming practices. Um, And, and so that's, that's um, water, but then the other one I want to talk about is peak oil. Now peak oil uh, is not about uh, the uh, net supply of, of, of oil reserves uh, compared to what we've already used, but rather it, a, a peak will be reached once we've reached a point in which we can't produce more uh, in a given year than we did in previous years. So it is defined in terms of production, not of, su not of supply. Um, so if we produce 71 million uh, gallons of, of uh, oil per day now, and 70 next year, and never more than 70 again, then that, uh, then that will mean that oil peaks next year. Um, and uh, so with, with peak oil, um, there is a clear antagonism between a system that's based on oil and based on growth and the recognition that uh, the growth can't continue forever in terms of this dwindling resource. It's, it's a clear indication of the, of the madman mad uh, economist um, quote from before. Um, now, um, as, as Bill McKibben has pointed out, uh, oil, peak oil used to be like a fringe idea, sort of like global climate change used to be a fringe idea. But now the debate's basically over. Uh, in 2008, the conservative uh, organization, the International Energy Agency, Ener International Energy Agency, uh, uh, found that uh, so it is a conservative agency found that the production of current world oil fields is down 7% per year and will uh, be down by 9% per year over the next several decades. Uh, there's lots of, uh, of turncoats in this. Everybody's come over and just said, you know, it's going to happen. It's a question of when. Uh, but one example of CIA, CIA, former CIA director and defense secretary James Schlesinger um, said around the same time in 2007, I believe, that the battle's over and the peak oilists have won. So we do face a time in which uh, we, we can't continue to do the same thing over and over again. Um, and remember that this is all related to um, the wars that we're still currently in. Uh, Alan Greenspan said in his 2009 book, some of you might be aware of this, uh, that I, he said, I am saddened that it is politically inconvenient to acknowledge what everybody knows, that uh, the Iraq war is largely over oil. Uh, uh, which, you know, just putting the hammer down on what we already knew, and he was even admitting as much. It was about oil, but he's saying, you know, 
it's about oil, but it's a necessary war. Is it was basically uh, the point there. Uh, both Bush Senior, Bush Junior, and Cheney have all said different times the American way of life is not negotiable. This means a, a growth-based economy. This means an oil-based economy, and uh, it means one that uh, is is uh, de de committed to a system which uh, doesn't make sense. That is crazy uh, when you recognize. Uh, that uh, that there's dwindling that that we can't get, that with these resources are non non infinite they're finite uh, okay so then I just want to the, the end of this is just to talk about um, how they are related and then I raised three uh, problems related to that. I think I'll do this five or ten minutes um, so first of all just uh, some correlations of how they're related uh, but these are just some examples peak oil and greenhouse gases this is actually one of the great ironies of our time uh, which many people have pointed out um, that peak oil would mean that we would, uh, if oil peaked, this would mean that we would lose one of our single greatest emi uh, emitters and the thing that makes us capable of emitting so many other things. Um, uh, but it, uh, and it's coming at the same time that we are we are coming up uh, to the heads of the point where we're going to make changes because we want to uh, curb the greatest uh, possible disasters of uh, greenhouse gas related. Uh, um, but, um, as I'll say a little bit later, um, uh, we should resist uh, the collapse uh, fetishism uh, that is possible through this, where you say, you, you see peak oil as some sort of uh, um, saving, saving grace or some day to look forward to. Uh, this is like a tragic death wish. Uh, well, they'll finally know what, we're do what, what the problems are, you know, when, when, uh, when the shit hits the fan with this. But, uh, it just, just just becomes the problem to accelerate doesn't mean people are going to recognize them as such. Um, another correlation between uh, these three points, uh, these three issues, uh, is greenhouse gas emissions and food privatization. Um, I mean, think about the shipping involved in uh, these commodities, or the lack of concern for local foods. Um, um, so, as pointed out earlier, the local and organic movement is, is, seems, is said to be on, on the rise. This is sort of only in terms of like how long the time scale you look at. If, say, 10% organic uh, systems now, um, and that's like more by 5% say than 10 or 15 years ago. That seems like a great increase, but before the 20th century, all food was organic. Uh, that's what I was just thinking. No, that, that's great. So uh, it, um, it's a matter of perspective of saying, oh, you know, we have we have a few a few organic and local vegetables that we can pay for if we can afford them. Uh, don't let that be an apology for the horrific system uh, that we have before us. That is unprecedented and uh, has all these externalities in terms of uh, things that are factored into the system um, or into the in the cost of it, of the uh, product that are that are uh, deleterious such as long-term health effects of, uh, of cheap food um, and, or uh, uh, the greenhouse gas emissions of, 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 of fossil fuel consumption. Those are externalities, they're not confidence in the system, uh, but they're uh, big problems of it. So I want to correlate these, those issues that I've raised with uh, three critiques of capitalism. Firstly, um, and maybe I'll leave the points related to them, um, I'll draw out those we can draw those out in discussions, and I'll just uh, sort of say what I'm thinking about with each of those, and then we can um, open it up more to discussion. Um, so the, the first one um, is uh, short-term profits. Um, in a capitalistic system, uh, corporations and other, uh, in, in other uh, businesses uh, can only think on a, a short-term time scale. Uh, Long-term investment um, is, is just not possible. So in terms of food privatization, uh, it makes sense uh, that they can get as much, as they can make uh, the cheapest food and sell it to as many people um, in a short time period. Um, it leaves open the question, it jeopardizes our food for the long term, but there's no way that they can, um, in, in, a, in a current system of capitalism, uh, be uh, responsive to the needs of, of, of 
longer than five year time scale. Uh, they need to uh, be responsive to their stakeholders and their stakeholders, even if they are uh, otherwise very, say, green individuals, socially conscious.